TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The U.S. clarifies that while it does not set a time limit on Israel's defensive war vis-à-vis -vis Hamas, it aims to assist Jerusalem in transitioning to the next stage of the conflict. Israel reiterates that it will exhaust all non-military options before strong power is implemented to drive Hezbollah to the north of the Litani River in Lebanon. The United States announces Operation Prosperity Guardian to secure maritime shipping against Iranian-directed attacks in the Red Sea. The United States will not dictate the duration for Israel's defensive war against the Islamist Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Nonetheless, Washington consults Jerusalem on transitioning from the current high-intensity war to a stage of lower intensity. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin arrived in Israel yesterday, along with Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Charles Brown, and met with Prime Minister B. M. Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, and IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzia Levy, among others. The meetings were poorly focused on a range of issues, including the Gaza War, the Iran-directed attacks via its Yemeni proxy Ansar Allah on international shipping in the Red Sea, and ongoing hostilities via Iran's proxy in Lebanon, namely Hezbollah, against Israel. We're fighting a, a war of uh, civilization against barbarism. I can say that uh, when we spoke, I expressed again our commitment, Israel's commitment to achieve total victory against Hamas. Uh, and we think that this is not only our war, but in many ways, your war because you are leading the forces of civilization in the world. Uh, this is a battle against the Iranian axis, Iranian axis of terror, which is now threatening to close the maritime strait of Bab el-Mandeb. This threatens the freedom of navigation of the entire world. I appreciate the fact that you are taking action to uh, open that strait. It's not only our interest, uh, it is the interest, I think, of the entire civilized community. And I want to thank you for the support that you have shown consistently. Uh, and I welcome the opportunity to talk about what else we're doing to have uh, our common interest served. America's commitment to Israel is unwavering. And no individual, group, or state should test our resolve. So in the Red Sea, we're leading a multinational maritime task force to uphold the bedrock principle of freedom of navigation. Iran's support for Houthi attacks on commercial vessels must stop. Now, we'll continue to provide Israel with the equipment that you need to defend your country, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, including critical munitions, tactical vehicles, and air defense systems. We'll continue to support Israel's mission to find and free all of the hostages. Following a separate meeting at the Israeli Defense Ministry in Tel Aviv, Defense Secretary Austin and Defense Minister Gallant held a joint press conference during the course of which they both highlighted that while the IDF will continue to battle the Islamist Hamas until its military and governing capabilities are eradicated, Israel, in consultation with the United States, will opt to transition in the near future to the next stage of this war. This is Israel's operation, and I'm not here to dictate timelines or terms. Our support uh, to Israel's right to defend itself is ironclad, as you've heard me say a number of times, and that's not going to change. It's critical, as I said earlier, that Hamas uh, not be able to threaten Israel uh, from Gaza, or even threaten Gaza uh, anymore. You know, that's an interest that we all share. It's a common interest with all of us. And so today we had great discussions about the status of the campaign, about goals and objectives, and about uh, how to reduce uh, harm to civilians uh, in the battle space. And we also have some great thoughts about um, how to transition from high-intensity operations to a lower intensity and more surgical operations. So we had uh, great discussions on all of those uh, those issues.
we will continue to operate in different levels of intensity according to the situation in the, in the region. And uh, I, I can tell you that uh, uh, soon we will be able to, to distinguish between different areas in, in Gaza. In every area uh, where we achieve our mission, we will be able to uh, transition gradually uh, to the next phase and start working uh, on bringing back local population. That means that it can be achieved maybe sooner in the north rather than in the south. So we are dealing with all the different components and we will decide in the next, uh, in the next future, in the early future. Jerusalem's defense official further asserted in uncertain terms that following the war, Israel will not occupy the Gaza Strip, but it will maintain freedom of action to ensure that the Islamist Hamas or any derivative of the abhorrent terror group would re-emerge as the sovereign of the Palestinian enclave. Second, Israel will not control Gaza in, in any civilian way. We will conduct any, any needed uh, uh, operation and military effort in order to secure our future and we are building the routes for uh, non-hostile partners in, in the other side. Minister Gallant and Secretary Austin also addressed ongoing hostilities emanating out of Lebanon as well as Syria which are threatening prospects of wider escalation. On Lebanon, uh, we've been clear that uh, we don't want to see this conflict widen into a, a, a uh, larger war or a regional war, and, uh, and we call upon uh, Hezbollah uh, to make sure that uh, they don't do things that would provoke a wider conflict. In one hand, we are patient, and uh, we are looking for a diplomacy solution that will uh, make sure that Hezbollah is not threaten Israeli uh, uh, civilians on the northern communities directly. On the other hand, we are preparing ourselves to any, any situation that is needed. And uh, if something like that happened, uh, we will know what to do and we will prevail. We, we are not looking for anything similar to that. And we hope that Hezbollah will understand it. It's time to stop. It is important to know that hostilities emanating out of Israel's northern neighbors has intensified in recent days. And while deadly exchanges of fire were reported along Israel's border with Lebanon during the day, Iranian proxies launched at least three projectiles toward Israel's northern Golan Heights region in an attack believed to be related to bombardments of Iranian targets in the vicinity of Damascus the evening prior. Thankfully, no Israeli injuries or damage were reported. As a result, the IDF confirmed that artillery struck the sources of fire in Syria and that IDF tanks struck a military post belonging to the Syrian army. Meanwhile, after his brief visit to Israel, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin traveled to the Kingdom of Bahrain where he met, among others, with CENTCOM's NAVSENT commander, Admiral Bradley Cooper, and utilized the public stage to announce the enhanced formation of Task Force 153 in the Red Sea to assert maritime dominance amid recurring attacks by the Yemeni Ansar Allah, a Houthi-dominated Iranian proxy, against international shipping in the Strait of Bab el-Mandab and adjacent waterways. With the lifeblood of the rules-based international order is actually seawater. All countries have the right to move freely and lawfully in international waters. But that foundational global right is under new threat today from the totally unacceptable attacks on merchant vessels by the Houthis in Yemen. So this morning, We've launched Operation Prosperity Guardian under the umbrella of Combined Maritime Forces and under the leadership of Task Force 153. That operation is bringing together more than a dozen countries from around the world 
to conduct joint patrols in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. The newly enhanced Naval Task Force 153 is set to include vessels out of the United Kingdom, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, the Seychelles, and Spain. And while Task Force 153 is mandated to contend with the threat emanating out of Yemen, the leaders of the participating countries are well aware that the Islamic Republic of Iran is the facilitating force behind those attacks. The Houthis, to name them, we know that they are often supported by Iran, have fired missiles, launched drones and seized vessels over the past few weeks. This must stop. You have seen that we have decided to strengthen our cooperation to fight against the terrorist threat in Red Sea area. Actions will be taken in coordination with our allies. This is in line with what the President of the Republic had expressed several days ago. We must strengthen our operational capabilities in the area to put an end to these attacks. It is important to highlight that in response to the announcement regarding the U.S.-led task force to secure maritime shipping, the RDC Navy commander announced the formation of a besieged naval unit, which will carry out missions with vessels armed with rockets in sectors of perceived Iranian influence. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, it is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based non-profit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, if you're blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hessen, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we will see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.